What are the books that had a lot of impact on you? There are three of them cumulatively. Mm. Uh, the Selfish Gene uh, by Richard Dawkins, Obliquity by uh, John Kay, and then recently one called Sapiens uh, by an Israeli guy called uh, Noah, whose second name, Harari, Noah Harari. Harari. Um, and in order, they, they unpicked a real conflict in my mind, in that all my life I've been trained as a scientist, but every time I've achieved something I've behaved very, very emotionally. And those three books unpicked the science of emotion for me. So, and I, th between the three of them, they evidenced for me that um, we make a mistake of thinking that something has to be logical to be scientific, whereas something can be illogical, which emotions generally are, but still entirely predictable and will drive behavior. So it was the science of the illogical reaction to emotion and those three books one by one from a genetic point of view from a corporate point of view and then from a sociological point of view unpicked it and so convinced me the sociological point of view is humans yeah. uh, um a sapiens sorry yeah uh, what are the other two obliquity is the corporate point of view and the selfish gene the, the, the clues in the name is from a genetic perspective and together they closed the loop the, together they they built a a, a, a really mind-blowing case here yeah. What, are the, what is a habit that uh, you developed in the last five years that you're proud of or that yeah. had an actual really big effect in your life? Four years, 329 days ago, okay. I had my last drink of alcohol. Um, Cheers! <laughs> <laughs> um, I was, um, I wouldn't go as far as say I was an alcoholic, but I drank far too much in a very bad way, like many, many people uh, do. Um, and then I realized why people drink too much. Uh, and it's about suppressing their emotions. It's for social anxiety, it's fear of abandonment, it's to give themselves courage and such like. And I decided that um, to suppress your own emotions is the coward's way out. Hmm. Face them. Emotions are brilliant. And it doesn't, um, alcohol doesn't just suppress the scary emotions, it suppresses the good ones as well. We have our emotions for a reason and I decided to, to, to surf the waves of emotion rather than try and stop them with alcohol. That was the best thing I ever did. How did you surf, uh, started surfing your emotion and not fall into another way of getting addicted to work or whatsoever? Oh, I did all that. <laughs> I started eating ice cream and that. You, you never quite stop, you, you keep going. And we have to practice surfing the emotions. It's hard, yeah. What is the best advice you ever got? It's a really, really simple thing. I've had lots of really good mentors and, uh, and helpers and researchers in my life. But there's one from a, a guy called Ken Burnett uh, who's what in my field fundraising is one of the best known ever um, and all it was was we were writing reports for a board we were both attending and I did mine in five minutes too late and it was okay and Ken took me aside afterwards he said your board report was okay and he went yeah and he said well that's not good enough he said if you want to be the best everything you have to do has got to be the best it's not good enough presenting a board report that's good enough it's got to be the best one and it was thinking about that afterwards I said that is so obvious that you're not going to be successful, you're not going to make change, you're not going to make money by being average. You've got to make everything as good as you can possibly make it. It was just a moment in time and it's such a simple one and so easy to remember. Good enough is not good enough. That's it. How did you apply that after that? Um, successfully. Um, <laughs> That's clear. It, it is with little things. Um, so it's like always being on time for a meeting. Being five minutes late, not good enough, even if there is an excuse. It's spell checking your emails and writing proper sentences. It, it's tiny little things that create the habit. And then you go back and revisit things. So it's, it's a, a memes approach. It's, it's not one big philosophy. It's just trying to look at every little thing. Yeah. Uh, what is the thing that you believe in that is uh, the opposite of what people around you or people in general believe in? Most people seem to think that human beings are special. Um, where <laughs> observation decides we're just animals that talk. <laughs> I've come to realize that all animals have a level of consciousness. It just doesn't involve the same level of, level of language that we do. But I can look at the behavior of animals in the wild. I can look at the behavior of animals in captivity and it's exactly the same as, as human beings. So there's a kind of arrogance that we're a bit different and we can solve everything. No, we're just animals that talk. If you want to understand humanity, understand animals, then add to the complexity of talking on top. Simple as that. What are moments that you have to explain that to people, to arrogant people? 
and I have to do it all the time to people that think they're special. Uh, and people who think our heightened layer of consciousness is something else are particularly difficult with it. I'm not going to name who they are because every <laughs> religious organization in the Netherlands will jump down my throat. Um, but there are people who think we are different and there's something spiritually divine about humans. No, there isn't. We're animals.